So chronic stress is one of the biggest reasons as to why we as people and also entrepreneurs kind of let go of our health and things kind of fall apart within our life. So in today's video, I'm gonna be outlining the four types of chronic stress that we most commonly experience and also the strategies that you can incorporate to help manage and deal with this stress so you can be healthier, so you can be happier and so you can manage yourself and your life better. I don't make a sound when I stray. You better just run for your life. So in today's video, we're gonna be covering the problems with high levels of stress, why moderate amounts of stress are necessary, the four different types of stress commonly experienced, and the strategies you can incorporate to combat this. So 74% of UK adults have felt so stressed at some point over the last year, they felt overwhelmed or unable to cope. 51% of adults who felt stress reported feeling depressed and 61% reported feeling anxious. So problems with high stress on performance. Chronic stress is one of the biggest reasons why entrepreneurs let go of their health. In a high state of stress, a proper diet and regular exercise are the first things to go out of the window. Stress can create a state of low energy and this detracts from our life force. Okay, and our life force is essentially the energy that we have each day, you know, our drive to lead people, to put fires out within the business, to basically deal with the shit that we need to deal with and kind of the energy that we give off. Um, and this impacts everything from what, what we do in work to our relationships to the energy that we have to work out and adhere to a diet. Um, it's very important. So can some stress be good? So a study done by the University of Berkeley in California concluded that a moderate amount of stress leads to cell growth in the brain's learning centers. Moderate amounts of stress sharpen your focus and this can be particularly useful in life or death situations. If you're about to cross the road and get hit by a car, then that stress required to help you move out of the way um, so you don't get hit. Similarly, if you're in a fight, then stress is what is going to allow you to defend yourself so you can get out of the situation safely. Therefore, it's important that we have some stress in our lives for the longevity of our health, okay? So this point basically is just showing that not all stress is bad. When we're exposed to very high levels of stress, it can be a negative, but small amounts of stress are actually needed for our body to survive, for us in those fight and flight situations, and actually just to remain healthy as well. Um, you know, it's impossible for us to have no stress, so we actually need some stress in our life to function properly. The 2012 study by the University of Wisconsin Madison surveyed two groups of people and rated their stress levels in how it affected their health. The conclusion after looking at public health records found that those who perceived stress to be a negative to their health had a 43% chance of dying prematurely. Those who didn't perceive stress as a negative were the least likely group to die. So this is really interesting. Essentially, if you feel or you perceive stress in a negative light or in a bad way, that can actually reduce the chance that you have to live a long life and reduce your life expectancy. And on the contrary, those that perceive stress as a good thing were the least likely to die. So again, it's not just the amount of stress that you're exposed to, but actually how you perceive that stress, how you internalize it and your own perception of it and the way that you manage it, which I thought was really interesting, um, especially when it comes to your overall kind of you know, longevity and life expectancy. That's, that's a really interesting um, bit of information. So what can we learn from this? You know, our thoughts and perceptions are powerful forces. They are dictating your reality experiences and the quality of your mental and physical health. While removing stress is impossible, we can reduce the amount we experience by reframing things so we can perceive them in a different light. And I think this photo really encapsulates it really well. You've got one, it's a meme, right? You've got this guy on the left, it still hurts though. And the guy on the right, it is what it is. So again, like one person, well, two people could be in the same situation, person A and person B, but person A could be looking at it completely different to person B. And that's not only gonna affect, you know, their day to day, but also things like their health, their life expectancy, and essentially how they manage stress, okay? Um, so I think that having a perspective of, okay, cool, we can deal with this, it is what it is, will always hold you well when it comes to stress. So I'm not gonna run over the four types of stress that we most commonly experience. And the first one is emotional stress. So emotional stress is the stress that we most commonly experience. This can be emotions such as anger, frustration, anxiety, and sadness. There is a critical link between stress, emotions, heart function, and also our cognitive performance. Research measured the connection between participants' emotional and physical responses to stress tests. Those who reported heightened emotions also had higher levels of inflammation markers in their blood. 
which is very, very interesting. So essentially, in short, your emotional state affects your physical state and you can make yourself sick from the thoughts and the emotions you have. So again, going back to that point, your perception, the way you think about things will not only affect, um, you know, overall stress but also the especially the emotional stress that you have which i think is super interesting so solutions for dealing with emotional stress emotional reframing things like journaling meditation going for a walk deep breathing all of those things can be great for dealing with that emotional stress another thing is removing yourself from toxic relationships and influences okay because these have an impact on our emotions um, and especially the people we associate ourselves with and also i think talking it out therapy is really good now the reason i say this is because i think a lot of people try and do all of this stuff to deal with emotional stress right like they 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 do like all of this physical stuff like they go to the gym they try and do marathons and alex hormozzi talks about this it's like well the way to deal with the emotional stress is what is the thing directly that's causing you that emotional stress it may be a a breakup of a relationship it may be trauma that's happened to you it may be a relationship that's broken down within your family right so actually dealing with that head-on is uh, uh, no that may mean talking out going to therapy things like that um can actually be very useful when addressing the problem um you know you can do a lot of things to distract yourself from stresses but actually tackling it head on can most of the time be be the solution to the problem um so it's important to slow down obviously diagnose that and then act to make a change so actually find out what that cause of emotional stress is diagnosing it and then making that change as i spoke about so stress number two is environmental stress so the, the default environment in the world is not conducive to optimal health performance and energy preservation. We are surrounded by foods that are nutrient devoid for our body, such as fast foods, sugary drinks, and a lack of sunlight. We are consumed by information that is nutrient devoid for our minds, such as trash TV, news, and social media. All of these things will zap you of your productivity through distraction and dopamine hits that give you no long-term benefit. Okay, so especially as an entrepreneur, you want to, you know, manage your environment as best you can and control that the best you can. Now, if you're using a default environment that we have for both your physical health and your mental health, it's never going to be conducive to development or you know managing stress well, um, because the way that the world is set up, and the truth of it is, it's not set up for optimal performance and optimal health. So solutions for dealing with environmental stress. The first is to set an environment that is conducive to growth, okay? So whether that's your working environment, whether that is the people that you associate yourself with, whether that's your workout environment, even things such as your bedroom. And like one of my biggest habits is like clean everything. Okay, everything should be clean from the from the bathroom to the bedroom, to the workspace, to the kitchen. Keep a clean environment because that again is gonna set you up for far less stress and you're gonna perceive things in much more of a positive light. Keep only healthy food in the house. Again, the right environment for proper nutrition is gonna help you out. And especially when you get emotionally stressed late at night from work, putting out fires in the business, that kind of stuff, and you get those cravings, if you only have healthy food in the house, you're much more likely to make better decisions when it comes to food. Remove the clutter as well. So not just the clutter from your physical spaces, remove the clutter from digital spaces, social media, remove people that are not conducive to your development, remove the people and the accounts that are not benefiting you, remove all of the stuff that's stuck on your desktop and get rid of it. Okay, that's gonna reduce a lot of stress that you have as well. And what's really important is surround yourself with people who want the best for you, okay, or who are the best for you. Again, you know, whether that's people you live with, the people that you spend your free time with, the people you connect with, you wanna make sure that those people are also growing in your direction and of course have good habits that you can then either copy or associate yourself with. Stress number three is relational stress. So when stress goes unresolved or unchecked, our cognitive function can become impaired and our energy can be drained. The recent situation with isolation, of course, COVID, uh, will test and challenge your relationships like none other. You may find you're someone who neglects time to take care of your personal needs when trying to look after others. And especially if you've got a business and you're looking after employees, you're looking after that, that's your baby. But also if you're managing um, you know, or having a family with that, looking after kids, your partner, you may find that you know you let all the stress build up because you're dealing with everything and you're taking the, the ownership, but you've actually, in the process, forgot to take care of yourself. So little stresses from key relationships will add up over time and when overlooked, they will quickly tally up to become more impactful stressors. So for solutions for dealing with relational stress, Respond, don't react. Acknowledge the concern of your loved ones. Pause and respond after listening. This is especially important if you've had super stressful work day um, and obviously you're then addressing things with partners, you know, friends, family and things like that. It's really important that we kind of don't 
out, have outbursts and act out because obviously um, that can obviously negatively impact uh, relationships and obviously cause more stress. Um, obviously end toxic and bad relationships. This may mean casual relationships as well. So that's one of the things I've started to do this year is end the casual relationships I have with people. And that's for me, for a long period of time, that wasn't fulfilling, it was causing me a lot of stress. Um, and now I have a different outlook that's helped out. So, you know, you may be in my situation, you may be in a different situation, but again, you just need to end what's not working for you um, and things that are bad, especially within relationships. And like I mentioned, put your oxygen mask on first, look after yourself so you can take care of others. Okay, so you wanna put yourself in the strongest position you can um, to have healthy relationships with others, whether that's intimate relationships, non-intimate relationships, relationships with your employees and friends and things like that. Um, because when you're in a healthy space, you then attract and give off the energy to other people that um, is positive. And, and that's gonna have you know a good impact on reducing that relational stress. Stressor four, work-related stress. One of the most chronic types of stress is work-related stress, as it can follow you anywhere. High work-related stress is so lethal because it can actually make you dumber. When you're in this state, something called cortical inhibition inhibits a small part of your brain which prevents you from functioning at your best. When we are in a coherent state, we are emotionally sharp and we feel and think with enhanced clarity. This allows us to move at a faster pace with more precision. So in a state of coherence, the brain, the heart and the nervous system are working in harmony and this state facilitates elite performance. So this is very interesting how high you know, work-related stress can actually make you dumber. And you've probably found that when you're super burnt out or you've got a lot on and you just work, 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 your ability to be creative and your ability to you know, make big decisions, you just feel like your brain's fried and you can't do it. And this is the reason for it is due to this cortical inhibition. So the more that we can adopt a coherent state and have everything working in harmony, the less work-related stress will kind of impact us. Solutions for dealing with work-related stress. So suffocate work stress as soon as possible. So when things come up, find a way to deal with it immediately. This may mean having time off, spending time outdoors, going for walks in nature, that kind of stuff, and getting out of work mode. And something that I've found is when I am detached from the place that I'm working, whether that's my office, whether that's the, whatever environment it is, I go into rest or you know I just take time off, I end up solving problems because my mind's not full. Um, and it, it's strange, like you don't want to solve the problem um, while you're walking, but somehow you do it because you're thinking of things in a different way. You're more relaxed, you're more open. And um, it's funny how sometimes things work like that. So that can be a benefit. And obviously that then takes a load off your mind. Um, and also the idea that life is not a marathon, it's a series of sprints. This is really important as an entrepreneur when it comes to work is you can't be running a marathon all the time and you know having this constant like energy and demand on your body all the time. The way that I think is really optimal to work is to you know have series of sprints, right? So you know you do a work block, a work week, a work month, whatever it is that's quite intense. Then you have that break and you take that time off and you rest like a sprinter would. Okay, so you're really you're focusing really intense and then you're having that time to recover it to recover. That way you can get kind of more done in less time. And then you're getting that rest, the rejuvenation, that ability to recover that's then going to reduce overall stress within your body. So in summary, high levels of stress can have a negative effect on performance, health and well-being. Moderate amounts of stress are needed for us to operate, of course. Our emotions, environment, relationships and work are all tied to our health. Make sure you identify the areas where you are most stressed to take the correct action going forward. So thank you for watching today's video on stress and I hope that you found it useful and beneficial when it comes to dealing with chronic stress and the strategies you can use to help manage them better. I've actually made a video that you can watch right here that's actually gonna help you with health, fitness and performance as an entrepreneur. So make sure you click on this, give it a watch and see you in the next video.